Welcome to Going Dark, a podcast about Netflix's sci-fi series, Dark. I'm Dan. I'm Olga, and today we're discussing Season 1, Episode 7, entitled Crossroads. It's been quite a while, it seems. We took some time off for the holidays. I hope everybody out there is safe and happy. And healthy. And healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, We have these new arms. Arms. And we are going to get into this episode, which I think was a good one, but not as good as the last few. Yeah, I'm 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 really starting to feel our like slow watch here. <laughs> um, Certainly I'm, when you take a few weeks off, it doesn't help. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but even so, it's just, you know, these episodes really are building on each other. And mm-hmm. maybe as individuals, not all of them stand up to the strength of other ones so this one felt a little bit i don't know repetitive to me in some ways like Mm -hmm. i know we made movement forward but somehow i still feel like we're retreading old ground that i as a viewer am just Mm -hmm. like ready for them to accelerate past yeah i mean i think part of it is that it's characters catching up to the audience in some in certain scenes especially ulrich Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we did get significant movement forward when it comes to Helge. Now, yeah. I still don't know if it's Helge or Helga. I think, because we're saying Helga. Charlotte, ah, because the E ends with a ah. Someone in Helga, our in the comments wrote that an E at the end of a German word is pronounced like U-H. Mm-hmm. Something Helga. 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 That's what I'm going to try to say. <laughs> and people can make fun of my pronunciation all they want. <laughs> it won't help me. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I we got a lot of movement forward there. We got, you know, the reveal of at least one of the uh, hooded figures. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got some interesting Jonas stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just, I'm ready to, like, really get into these last few episodes and really ramp up into things. Mm-hmm. Um, shall we get into our recap? Let's do it. So, recap. Off the top of the head. I'm scared of this one. Not going to go. <laughs> gotta say, might be time to start taking notes. We uh, take notes for the points of interest. Might be time to start taking notes for the whole episode. Because we'll find I out. don't trust myself <laughs> to remember everything. So I write it down and we talk about yeah. it. But this, this is all on Dan's crazy mind. <laughs> all right. So, you know, it's not going to necessarily be in order, but it will happen. <laughs> All right, so we start off and we have this this child of the 50s uh, wearing an old-timey outfit and he's in the den of horror, science room. And the child's playroom the with ch- a big machine in it. The child bunker of death. And he has a messed up ear and it's probably Helga because we cut to Helga and he's like, I remember and I'm old. And but here's the thing. It's more than just his ear. It's like the side of his face. So mm-hmm. the way I think I noticed the like actual wounds and slashes on the kid's face seem to really match up with older, especially that like middle aged one, not the elderly ones like scarification. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm fairly confident in that being him. Yeah. The first time I watched it, I, I thought it was supposed to be Yasin. And then I was like, nope, you're just blind. I just can't see stuff. But. This is why we watch multiple times. And, and we talk about it together <laughs> yeah. in between watches. Yeah. So, okay. Then I will do Jonas's story, mm. I guess. So Jonas is a young boy. He wakes up in the year of 1986. And he is like, this is weird. And so he goes around town and he meets one Ragina. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what year is it? And she's like, you're hot. And he's like, yeah. And uh, no, I made that part up. But I Oh my God, is them. he Bartosh? He can't be Bartosh's dad. Doesn't add up. That would be great. It would, wouldn't That'd it? Be great. But it doesn't yes. make sense. I, what do you mean it doesn't make it's sense? Thir- they Bartosh is enough. not 33, though. Well, I mean, he doesn't have to immediately give Why birth. Why not? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's still my pet theory that he ends up being Regina's husband. But mm. but I, I mean, it seems so much more likely he's just the stranger. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, they went out of their way to have the two of them meet. And, like, he needs a new love interest, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So And people bully her and don't understand her. And they both have, like, mental stuff they're struggling yeah, with. Yeah, that's true. So I'm just saying, 
Who's to say? Uh, I'm down. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather this than Aunt Cest. I don't know. Aunt Cest oh is pretty god, good. Oh my god, Dan. Um, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Marta Cest. Uh. Um, so then he decides to go look for Mikkel. And more like he goes to the hospital specifically. Oh, yeah, that's one of the things that Regina tells him. He's like, mm -hmm. Enos is working at the hospital. He's like, okay, I'll go to the hospital. So he's trudging along and he runs into one Egon Tildeman. Tiedemann. Uh, Tiedemann. Dude. You always. <laughs> Egon Tiedemann. And... Washed up cop extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. He is, you know, he's trying to pin everything on Ulrich, but. He's been forced into actually doing his job. <laughs> so he's going around town. We will get back to that later. Mm -hmm. uh, but he runs into one Jonas and he's like, you hooligan. What are you doing? Why aren't you a Are school? you a practicing Satanist? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that Satan man? <laughs> uh, Is he down with you kids these <laughs> days? So he's befuddled by Jonas's ear pods. He's like, now I've seen everything. Mm. And he drops him off at the hospital and Jonas sees off in the distance, Enos and Mikkel. And he's like, what? And um, then the stranger appears. Mm. And, you, and there's like this cool effect, sound effect where it's like. <laughs> uh, Great job, Dan. One to one. <laughs> it's more like clanging metal. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the stranger's like, you know, yeah, he's really your popper. And Marta's your aunt. Aunt, remember that. Um, <laughs> I'm glad someone said it out loud. I'm pretty sure Jonas is actually the one who's like, oh my God, that makes Marta my aunt. Yeah. He volunteers that no, information. He says, he's like clearly thinking about it because he goes, that makes Ulrich my my grandfather. And then the stranger goes, and Marta, you're on. <laughs> I'm, I guess I, my brain was protecting me from yeah. remembering it the way it was. Um, they look very similar when you see them. Based, Ser yeah. I don't know if it's like the styling mm -hmm. or the lighting, but they really found their angles here. Yeah. And I just like, it has to be, I really do believe, this is the ultimate red herring if the stranger <laughs> is not Jonas yeah. because they seemingly are doing the work to convince us of that. In which case, I'm expecting them to pull the rug out from under mm -hmm. us. But nonetheless, it's it, they're doing a good job. Yeah. I'm back on board with this theory. This show kind of reminds me of uh, the Instagram thing of siblings are dating. Where it's like, <laughs> you look at the people and you're like, are they related? Are they supposed to be related? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for yeah. those who haven't checked out that Instagram account, Dan loves it. It's a good time. Aunt uh Seth all the way. <laughs> So uh, he's basically, he tells him the back to the future rules basically here. And I'm sure it's going to be more complicated than that going forward. But basically he says, hey, if you, you know, take Mikkel away from here, you'll stop existing because he, he's meant to stay here and become your father. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that they're talking about like creating potentially parallel worlds or is there just one overriding world and given the amount of time travel that's happening here because it seems like it's like constant it's interesting that they're doing the back to the future idea which i, I did not really expect um so here's where i guess i'm confused mm. and struggling to understand it it almost feels like these years are traveling together like when a day passes in the past mm. the, that same day is happening in the future. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm getting confused as to how you're not just jumping 33 years back. You're also like control. You know, someone is able, maybe the stranger is able to control. I want to show up on this day 33 years ago or 33 years in the future, as opposed to just like 33 years from the day I'm currently in. I think it has to do with the specifics of the cave and also that whole thing about the 33 year cycle. I don't, yeah, the, the cave isn't allowing you to say, I want to go back to, you know, June 3rd, 1986. Mm -hmm. But maybe, like you said, if you have that machine or something that mm -hmm. the stranger had in his little suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seems like it's almost like the cave is bringing you to parallel times, I think, is mm -hmm. the idea. And that they With affect each other. Yeah. You know, uh, distances. And the dates and everything, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so he's basically like, don't do it, but like, also, it's your choice. You know, every every choice you make is a choice not to do something and a choice to do something. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, Jonas decides, you know, I want to live. And so I like he, my existence, yeah. which is a choice for mentally yeah. ill people, you yeah. know, like that good for him. Mm-hmm. So he goes home and he talks to his mom about like, you know, dad really did love you. And then he burns the uh, letter. Mm-hmm. So that, that said, this letter still exists in their universe, in yeah. their timeline, because his grandmother has. Yeah. Yes. yeah, she has the copy that's at this point only a few months old. Fascinating that we haven't seen like present Enos in like since the pilot. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. Mm. Um, maybe she's wearing a hood. Mm. <laughs> um, so that's basically Jonas's story for this episode. Should I maybe I'll just go through Egon and yeah. what he was up to. So like we mentioned earlier, Egon was tasked with going to the power plant, talking to the various people who work there, their routes and where they were the night that Mads disappeared. So he talks to 1986 Helga, and Helga's a little shifty about it. Yeah. Why yeah. Forest Road indeed? Uh, non-committal with mm-hmm. his answers. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'll talk to you in a few days. Gives him time to get his story straight. Yep. Come and up with so, an alibi. So Egon's story is very tied to Ulrich this episode. So we have him find, uh, Egon find that out, and then in the present Ulrich is like he never you know Helge never showed up for his uh, appointment with mm-hmm. Egon what's up with that mm-hmm. I'm gonna you know chase any lead I have mm-hmm. so he goes to try to talk to Helge and it does not go well because Helge has dementia and the people in the hospital are mad at him yeah so stop um, harassing that poor old man who w- was not a nice middle aged man <laughs> but you know he's Elderly and frail now. Yes. So because of this, Ulrich is suspended. He goes back home to his wife. Now we're going to jump back to Egon, who's talking to Katarina mm-hmm. in uh, the 80s. And she's like, he didn't rape me. And, and But she has this bruising on her face. And he's like, well, he did that. And she's like, no, he didn't. He would never hurt me. Cut to... You cheated on me in the present. And you never did you ever even love me? You hate it here. What mm. what is this? It's yeah, that's that's harsh. I have to say I like I I'm not to, I'm not going to say that I think it's bad, but I th- I, I laughed a little bit to oh, myself. No, where is this going? The way the way Ulrich's like response was just like hanging his head like yeah. pretty intensely. Yeah. <laughs> he just like kept hanging his head yeah. in, like a sad puppy. Well, cuz he, and then his thing of like I can explain. It's like, dude, you can't though. Yeah. Like you can't explain. <laughs> Your explanation is full of crap. Like yeah. stop. Yeah. It was almost this thing of like he's hang he is hanging his head. It also parallels him, like, as he's sitting in the cell, he's, like, sitting up straight. Like, he knows, you know, even if he's afraid, he knows that he's not guilty. Whereas here is like, you're guilty of hurting yeah. her, like, really badly. And and you lied to her when she asked you straight up and yeah. you cheated. Dude, you can't talk your way out of this no. until maybe you do. Yeah, we'll find out, Honestly. I suppose. So while Egon's doing his case and Oleg's doing his case, we also have Charlotta investigating the power plant they finally got their search warrant Mm -hmm. and she finds the like hidden cavern where they had been keeping that toxic waste Mm -hmm. that we'd seen a while back and she finds like a hidden door and she's like what's up with that meanwhile Uh, she also finds what looks like paint chips to me yeah from the barrels themselves Mm -hmm. and meanwhile throughout the episode Ulrich is like Helga 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 and or Helga, I guess is what we were going mm. with. <laughs> Helga, Helga, Helga. Um, and she's like, no, nah, he's old, man. But eventually she starts like being like, hmm, because she thinks, oh, Forest Road, that's the road he took. That like is where the, you know, the caves go and where the uh, cabin is. In um, the direction that her husband went in a few, mm-hmm. you know, at the beginning where she's like, I saw you going in that direction so- or coming from that direction. Is the implication that you can go from that cavern where the barrels were into the bunker? No, I think it's that there is a, you know, paths within yeah. the woods that can go. Wait, are you saying the cavern 
under underground like the caves go from the bunker to the thing no, i don't really i'm saying what the, the area where there used to be the toxic waste mm -hmm. and there's a door mm -hmm. is the other side of that door the door is that the door that uh ulrich always used to try to get into and he couldn't or is that a door that goes into the bunker I think it's supposed to go in the bunker, but I'm not actually clear on this geography. The thing that's confusing me about the bunker is, especially in the present, they keep only showing one angle, like it's a three camera sitcom or something. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what's on the other door? What, where, like, is it just this, like, really small space or what's on this wall? What's on that wall? Yeah. Is there a door? And you, like, that was confusing to me. I'm but... a little bit confused if there's, like, there has to be, like, an anti it's an antechamber in theory to the children's playroom i guess no because the they find later they find the, uh, the wallpaper wall so paper. that is literally where the bunk bed well, was i always thought yeah. yeah i was the reason i was confused is because noah is like scrubbing the ground of blood mm -hmm. and i'm like well i didn't see the machine standing there so how did they well i think they had they already time I'd... travel to the machine too no, I think that they already got rid of. The, I mean, they already got rid of the machine at that point. If they got rid of the machine, then why is he hasn't burnt? No, that? no, no. Okay, like he died, right? right. Or hmm. he, my point is, I don't know what the order of operations are, mm -hmm. but when when uh, Noah is was wiping the thing, mm -hmm. at that point they've started like erasing the existence of them being in this bunker mm -hmm. so they've already taken the wallpaper down and they probably already moved the machine somewhere else right and now he's just cleaning up the blood that's what i thought at first and then for some reason i got i convinced myself out of that mm -hmm. and i i don't really know this, why this is the other thing this is the first episode where i was legitimately confused mm. like there are previous episodes where i was like okay that's like intriguing or mysterious and we mm -hmm. don't understand it yet but like i feel like i'm not supposed to understand it yet whereas this episode was the first time where i was like okay this is there's a few too many layers i'm starting to get a little bit lost yeah um so charlotta is getting suspicious she calls her husband again she's like why did helga leave this cabin why you know why did he used to live there in the 80s when did he have his accident in the 80s we'll get back to that in the points of interest mm -hmm. but basically she goes there she's searching around the bunker and she finds part of that uh wallpaper, wallpaper we talked about before um meanwhile um Ulrich is continuing to stew in all this and he goes back to Helge's uh nursing Room. home yeah. yeah and he finds a bunch of different things and then he ends up seeing that Helge has left his room he, he leaves his room once there's all the flashing and we realize that Jonas is time traveling mm -hmm. back and, and Helge is like reawoken. Yeah. Um, so he, he's lucid. Yeah. So Ulrich realizes that Helge is walking. He follows him into the cave. Helga obviously like knows the caves. Well, he finds this lantern. Ulrich is following him and he's like very sure that like Helge had something to do with this in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, we cut to seeing that he did, that he um, pulls up Yasin from the bunker, mm -hmm. uh, dead Yasin. And uh, mm. we see Noah, you know, cleaning up his mess. Yeah. Ripped. Yeah. He's, Ripped he's, mopping. He looks pretty good. Yeah. You know, for a pretty, priest. Pretty, look, pretty good looking boy. <laughs> um, is there anything I missed? See, there's so much going there's on. There's a lot. I think I got the majority you of it. You got the important stuff. Yeah. The stuff that really, you know, again, Jonas is back in the modern times by the end. Mm -hmm. Ulrich's been caught cheating. He's suspended. Mm -hmm. Charlotta's, you know, suspicious. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I yeah. think these are the main important things. I mean, I guess the one thing that you missed is how Ulrich's mom is like oh. obsessed with Mads and Katarina's like, your family, dude. Um, well, our kid is missing. She realizes that she saw Helge, like middle-aged mm -hmm. Helge, both in the 80s and now. Like the, a few yeah. days before. So she probably saw like around when he was going after Yasin. Yeah. Is would be. And that he was arguing with Noah and she's like, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no. She saw them arguing with Noah when he was going after Mads. Yeah. And then, and then, unrelated to that, recently yeah. she saw middle aged nineteen eighties version of Helga yeah. in the modern day. Mm -hmm. So she's like, 
I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. I know <laughs> what I saw. Yep. All right. So we are going to be getting into our points of interest. Let's do it. All right, and this time, if you're a video watcher person, I have things on the television screen. Yeah. Whoa, and they have really nice uh, transitions. Yeah, everybody All likes right. it. So, this is Noah. <laughs> He's ripped. Very mm. nice job. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Good job, buddy. <laughs> That's the point of interest. <laughs> uh, no. So the imagery of Noah's back tattoo, it's also repeated throughout the show. Yeah. Um, it's in this same episode. It's in the hospital in art that Mikkel is staring at. Mm -hmm. And additionally, it's kind of hard to see on this image, but you have this like almost Celtic looking symbol that is appearing throughout the show as that well. I remember somebody told us what it was, but I don't remember who it was that told us. So I don't know where to find it. But thank you. We'll see it again. We'll <laughs> dig through as it continues to be relevant. But yeah. I think it's this thing. It's it has no beginning and no end. It's just yeah. like this interwoven symbol. And it is on the metal doors. It's like engraved into them as Jonas. The time does travel. The time cavern. travel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the idea is to represent that time is like infinite and mm -hmm. doesn't have a beginning or it an ending. Loops backwards yeah. and forwards. Yeah. yeah. And also probably past, present, and future, which is why it has like three three points yeah. overall. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really it. Like we saw this same mm -hmm. shot in a previous episode, but we didn't know it was Noah back then. Yeah, I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. that we had actually. I, I went back to a previous episode and I was like, oh, this is literally the same shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Noah writes these dates on the wall. He mm -hmm. scrawls them. I believe we also see them in the previous episode in the notebook that oh, okay. uh, Peter's holding. But all right, for all of us Americans, this is <laughs> this is November fifth, nineteen fifty three, and November 9th, nineteen fifty three. Mm. That Europeans are smart, day, month, year. <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I mean. The thing, the, the reason that to me this is a point of interest is because like we've talked from an early on about like, mm -hmm. oh, what about the grandparents generation? I think this is very much pointing like we are going to go to the yeah. 50s, probably not too far away from now. I think we're going to see Helga's backstory. Yeah, especially because he's he that kid version of him is from the 50s. It yeah. seems pretty clear. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, just, yeah, that's imminent, I guess. And additionally, this is kind of like we talked about with the distance the 33 year cycle mm -hmm. you know we have these power outages happening as Jonas walks through that you know crawls through the portal also mm -hmm. on November 9th of 2019 yeah or and also November 9th of 1986 so it's <laughs> just you know even the actions are mirroring yep. each other Ooh. now let's talk about that accident yeah so we're actually talking about not his ear being burnt off or his face being Helga. Yes, yeah. Helga's. Uh, this is where Charlotta is calling Peter yep. and saying oh, what about Helga's accident? When did that happen? So this is one of the things that him? made me really confused, especially on first watch where I was mm -hmm. like, is, I assume when you look at Helga and you go his accident you assume yeah. that means the ear thing mm -hmm. uh, but from what we see it looks like the ear thing happens to him when he's a kid mm -hmm. and then, the, his face is healed in the 80s yeah so he's hurt somewhere between you well know. and also when you see him as you know in the 80s before and we're still three days away from when the accident mm -hmm. happens he already has the ear thing yeah that's what I'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so because of that it seems as though whatever the accident is probably wasn't an accident mm -hmm. but whatever whatever it is coming up in a few days that's probably why he like part of why he didn't end up getting questioned by Egon and all that stuff too I see it as he never shows up for his interview mm -hmm. and then Egon goes after him mm -hmm. and then something happens there where he he gets out of it maybe Egon dies there mm -hmm. as well but the point being that he, I it, you know it happens after he was supposed to be interviewed so mm -hmm. I think they must be tied together well it's also no what if it's something well, okay since they say they say accident, but then they also say, "Why would they keep? Why would he keep the cabin after everything he went through there?" Mm. Which to me, like, almost implies he was like kidnapped or like held, but but that's not an accident. So I don't know. Unless there's a cover up. Yeah, unless there's like a hunting accident, or I don't know. I don't know. That but, could be the cover up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
But we also find out that Peter didn't move in with his father, mm -hmm. didn't move back to Vinden until 1987, which leads me to believe, is he actually his son? Who mm -hmm. is he? Could he be another, like, missing child from the time stream which yeah. is another reason that he's that involved now how gay like had a change of heart and mm -hmm. didn't yeah didn't uh kill him mm -hmm. or he survived the way hell gay did maybe maybe yeah yeah i think there's more to peter than meets the eye more to this doppel head the next point has to do with these necklaces that we keep seeing throughout the show mm -hmm. it is a like copper coin i think a penny equivalent mm -hmm. on a red string mm -hmm. obviously the red string is something that we've been seeing a lot of it's mm -hmm. tied to ariadne's thread it's mm -hmm. the maze the stranger leaves it for Jonas on the bike mm -hmm. these necklaces we've seen one discovered on that first boy's body who turns out to be mads yep. we see one at the end of this episode around yazin's neck we're, pr we're pretty sure that's mm -hmm. Yasin, but on that yep. body that 1986 helga is uh dragging yep. and now we yeah, find it this here. picture is of uh ulrich having found it within helga's uh book about the time stuff mm -hmm. and it's his bookmark this is probably his coin that he had around his yeah. neck when he was a little kid yeah because he's um, wearing it that kid from the very beginning mm -hmm. in that 50s garb with the mm -hmm. burnt ear also has it on yeah any theories about this? Maybe it's a thing of like helping guide you through it, or it's just like they need like a little piece of metal to conduct something with the machine or maybe, something. Maybe, or yeah, yeah, that, I don't know. that's the closest I, I can get. So they leave them on them as like a token. Mm. I mean, if we're going with the Greek mythology, you know, you use the to travel into the underworld, the dead are being buried with like a uh... coin to pay their That's way through and you know we have ariadne and theseus like the maze yeah. so i think symbolically it, that's interesting but like within like practically within the yeah. world it seems pretty dumb to be uh linking all these bodies together with an with a trait like that but yeah whatever <laughs> well we'll see what their reasoning is yeah. down the line next up all right so this is just another thing kind of incriminating helge the fact that yazin saw a little wooden figurine in the woods and that you know and then someone came up to him and was like no one wants to meet you yeah. and now we have this same kind of yeah. figurine it's pretty i could say pretty conclusively that that uh helge from 86 is the one who specifically took yazin yeah, yeah he's the kidnapper at least of mm -hmm. a few of these children yeah i mean something you were talking about before we recorded is the idea of okay helge was like the first one to survive the mm -hmm. machine and then he somehow got like indoctrinated into he helping became an acolyte of yeah. it he he was convinced that this was a worthy cause for some mm -hmm. reason you know elderly modern day helga is like oh i can save them in the past but i can mm -hmm. also save the future so mm -hmm. something they're trying to avert some kind of crisis mm -hmm. i think i think it has to do with the nuclear power plant because mm -hmm. that you know nuclear waste has to factor in and more than just a conspiracy government cover-up mm. kind of thing so i think that maybe there is going to be a nuclear reactor explosion mm -hmm. Jonas has the geiger counter and that's why helga feels like it's a worthy cause i mean mm -hmm. growing up in the 50s in germany like mm -hmm. nuclear war the threat of that was intense mm -hmm. so with the cold war raging yeah I think these have to be tied together that he thinks he's now on a one man mission of having been loosened and awakened to his own guilt and the awful things he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And next we have Katarina's bruising. Yeah. So a bit unrelated to all the other conspiracy theory things, mm -hmm. but you know, she says, uh, um, Ulrich would never hurt me. And yet she has this bruising mm -hmm. and Egon accuses Ulrich of doing this to her in the modern day Katarina's like oh your family they're calling about Maz when Mikkel is missing and mm. I thought my family was full of assholes so it, this leads me to believe that she's being physically abused at home. at home yeah which is something we already thought in previous episodes but this you know solidified that theory I would say so this is my problem mm -hmm. I guess of 
me as a viewer, yes, mm. we're podcasting, we're rewatching, we're paying close attention. Mm. I saw this bruising on her face mm. before, and my mind immediately went to, okay, her family, someone mm. in her family hit her. Yeah. And now, all right, an episode later, we're not having that confirmed yet, but mm. we also get more, have more hints. And I'm just yeah, like, why I mean, is? I understand it's character development, but it's it's so sparse that I. I'm starting to, this is what I mean of like ramping yeah. up the pace and like, I, give I mean, me more. Personally, I don't have a problem with it because the this scene isn't really a, like, it's just, that's just like a piece of what the scene is. Like right. the scene is, is getting across the whole idea of, you know, doing the practical thing of trying to get him out of jail. Yeah. And then, all, but the most important part of the scene is he would never hurt me. And then yes. Yeah. No, it's, it, the parallel him. is supposed to be to something else, but they're yeah. also, they are giving us hints about her yeah. home life and how, you know, not yeah. good it is. Yeah. Um, I do think that we missed one point of interest. Ooh. So no image for this one. So interesting that I didn't even think of it. Ulrich finds on the floor of his car the little yellow wooden figurine mm. that Mikkel did the magic trick with. Mm. And we hear the voiceover again from the first episode of, oh, it's not about when, you know, how it happened mm. or where it happened. It's about when. Mm. And I think this, I don't remember exactly when this revelation of Ulrich's happens. I think mm. it's before he goes back to um, Helga's yeah, it's right nursing before, home. Yeah. That's what sends him back to the yeah. nursing home. Yeah, but it really is, again, an episode for Ulrich to be buying into the time travel theory. Yeah. And I think by the end of the season, he really is going to believe his son is back in time and yeah. and his brother is, while deceased, back mm. from then. Well, this creates a very interesting potential conflict mm -hmm. where if Ulrich finds out that Mikkel is back in time, then we have our two protagonists of Ulrich and Jonas, and you understand why Ulrich would want to go get his son, but it would make Jonas not exist. Yeah, well, so, why would he care about Jonas? Yeah. And and then mm. that kind of turns Ulrich into a sympathetic antagonist. Yeah, interesting. That, unless you have any other secret no points of interest. No more secret points of interest. <laughs> That'll bring us basically to the end of our show. We uh, aren't doing feedback this week, mostly mm -hmm. because I forgot to set that up. But um, <laughs> but if you want to send us feedback in the future, you can do that a few different ways. You can email us at ourpodcastfeedback at gmail.com. You can leave a comment down below in the YouTube video. Also, you can rate or review us on Apple or various other podcast services. And we want to mm -hmm. say a thank you to... Tra underscore Smith for your five-star review on uh, Apple. Apple. Thank so you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys for checking this out. And we will be back next Tuesday with 108. We'll see you in the future. Boodaloo, boodaloo. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> <laughs>